In our previous videos, we discussed how to assess the airway and manage it step by step, beginning with simple maneuvers such as head tilt and jaw thrust, and progressing to advanced techniques like cricothyrotomy. In this video, we will focus on the difficulties that may arise during airway management, especially the definition of a difficult airway and the predictors that can help identify it in advance. Generally, difficult airway is defined as a situation where a trained anesthesiologist cannot easily ventilate with a mask, cannot intubate the trachea, or both. We call this scenario can't intubate, can't oxygenate situation. So difficult airway is a broader term used to describe the wider sets of airway issues where we might not be able to ventilate or oxygenate the patient. Different guidelines describe the definition of a difficult airway somewhat differently. The American Society of Anesthesiologists defines it as a situation where a conventionally trained anesthesiologist experiences difficulty with face mask ventilation of the upper airway, difficulty with tracheal intubation, or both. The focus here is on the practitioner, meaning the difficulty is judged by the experience of a conventionally trained provider rather than by an absolute patient characteristic. The definition highlights two core challenges, which are face mask ventilation and tracheal intubation. The Canadian guidelines take a broader view. They define a difficult airway as a situation where an experienced provider either anticipates or encounters difficulty with any or all of face mask ventilation. Laryngoscopy, tracheal intubation, supraglottic airway use, or surgical airway. A difficult airway in this context can be recognized beforehand, which is referred to as an anticipated difficult airway, or it may only become apparent during the procedure, which is referred to as an encountered or unanticipated difficult airway. It also covers various methods of airway support, including face mask ventilation, laryngoscopy, intubation, the use of supraglottic devices such as the laryngeal mask airway, and the potential need for a surgical airway. The Difficult Airway Society itself acknowledges that there is no single, fixed definition of a difficult airway. Instead, they recognize that different definitions exist in the literature and leave it to the clinical judgment of the anesthetist to decide whether an airway qualifies as difficult. Importantly, all three societies also acknowledge that difficult extubation should be considered a part of the broader concept of the difficult airway. There are two main situations in which a difficult airway may occur. These are anticipated and unanticipated airway difficulty. An anticipated difficult airway is recognized before induction through assessment of factors such as malampati score, thyromental distance, mouth opening, and neck mobility, allowing the anesthesiologist to prepare with optimized positioning, advanced devices, additional help, or even awake fiber optic intubation. An unanticipated difficult airway arises unexpectedly during airway management despite normal assessment findings. This is more dangerous because it leaves the team unprepared and increases the risk of hypoxia, making rapid recognition and a structured backup plan essential. Difficult airway can occur at various stages, starting from mask ventilation, supraglottic airway insertion, laryngoscopy, and intubation. To front of neck access. Let's begin with how we anticipate and recognize difficult mask ventilation. Mask ventilation is the first line method to oxygenate the patient. It is primarily used before other airway strategies, such as intubation or supraglottic airway insertion, are planned or attempted. During anticipated or unanticipated difficult intubation, Mask ventilation serves as a backup to prevent hypoxia if initial intubation attempts fail. This provides time to reassess the airway, optimize patient positioning, and decide whether to attempt supraglottic airway insertion or other advanced techniques. According to the American Society of Anesthesiologists, it is defined as a situation in which it is not possible for the anesthesiologist to provide adequate ventilation because of one or more of the following problems. This includes inadequate mask seal, excessive gas leak, or excessive resistance to the airflow. Several reviews and airway society teaching materials simplify this into a functional, outcome-based definition, 
stating that difficult mask ventilation occurs when an unassisted anesthesiologist is unable to maintain oxygen saturation above 90% using 100% oxygen or is unable to prevent or reverse signs of inadequate ventilation during positive pressure mask ventilation. Both the definitions assumes that standard measures have been applied, including optimal head and neck positioning, use of oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal airways, and the two-handed mask technique. To predict or anticipate difficult mask ventilation during airway assessment, we can use the Mohn's or Bones mnemonic, as discussed in the airway assessment video. This helps identify patients at higher risk for ventilation difficulty and guides preparation and planning. Supraglottic airways are another device widely used in anesthesia as mean to secure airway. In the context of a difficult airway, Supraglottic airways play a critical role as a backup for oxygenation when mask ventilation is inadequate and can also serve as a conduit for tracheal intubation in cases where direct laryngoscopy or initial intubation attempts fail. Difficult supraglottic airway insertion is generally defined as a situation in which placement of a device such as a laryngeal mask airway requires multiple attempts, is unsuccessful, or fails to provide adequate ventilation or oxygenation despite correct positioning and optimal technique. Some authors refine this further, describing it as failure to insert the device after three attempts by an experienced provider, or failure to achieve effective ventilation and oxygenation after successful insertion because of obstruction, leak, or malposition. The RODS mnemonic helps predict difficult supraglottic device insertion. Restricted mouth opening can make placement challenging, while obstruction from swelling or masses may interfere with device function. Distorted anatomy can make correct positioning difficult, and stiff lungs may cause high airway pressures in patients with chronic pulmonary disease or obesity. A stiff spine, such as with a cervical collar, can further limit movement and complicate insertion. Laryngoscopy precedes intubation and an easy laryngoscopy is essential for safe and effective intubation. Difficult laryngoscopy is generally defined as the inability to visualize any portion of the vocal cords after multiple attempts at direct laryngoscopy by an experienced provider, despite optimal patient positioning and external laryngeal manipulation. In practice, it typically corresponds to Cormac, Lehane grade 3 or 4, where only the epiglottis or no glottic structures are visible, despite optimal efforts. As with predicting difficult laryngoscopy, many of the anatomical and clinical predictors overlap for difficult mask ventilation, difficult supraglottic airway insertion, and difficult laryngoscopy or intubation. These predictors can be systematically assessed using the LEMON criteria. Again, the airway assessment part was discussed separately. Finally, we move to intubation, which is the definitive method for securing and protecting the airway. When intubation cannot be achieved, alternative techniques must be used to maintain oxygenation and ventilation, marking the beginning of difficult airway management. Difficult intubation is defined as a situation where a trained anesthesiologist requires multiple attempts, alternative techniques, or prolonged time to successfully place an endotracheal tube, despite optimal positioning and standard equipment. It is specifically considered difficult when more than three attempts or more than ten minutes are required to achieve tracheal intubation with conventional direct laryngoscopy. This definition helps guide clinicians to limit the number of attempts and switch early to a backup strategy such as mask ventilation or insertion of a supraglottic device. Careful assessment, such as the LEMON method, can also be used to predict a difficult airway and plan strategies in advance. Surgical airways also known as phona, such as cricothyrotomy and tracheostomy, are considered the last resort interventions during airway management when other attempts have failed. Difficult front of neck access refers to situations where establishing a surgical airway is challenging due to anatomical, pathological, or technical factors. Clinicians can use the short mnemonic to remember these risk factors, with S for surgery, H for hematoma, O for obesity, R for radiation, and T for tumor.
That's all for this video, in our next video we will look into how we manage difficult airway.